This series will be about uh, getting started with Lean 4, the theorem prover and programming language that is gaining traction. Um, basically, I'll be going through uh, the theorem proving in Lean and uh, mathematics in Lean, as well as giving you some uh, practical advice on how to get set up. So to start with, uh, go to the documentation page for Lean 4, leanlang.org slash documentation, and we're going to be using theorem proving in Lean. So go ahead and click on that. And basically, you're going to want to, um, once we get set up, uh, we'll be going through and starting with uh, propositions and proofs. So make sure you read chapter one and two. We're going to start with, go to Lean Documentation Overview, Quick Start, and uh, Setting Up Lean. Um, we're just going to be using Visual Studio Code. It's probably the easiest way. Uh, you're going to go ahead and install the extension. Make sure you have that installed, and you're going to want to make sure that you have Elan set up um, with the default uh, lean version. You should get prompted for that. Um, once you have that set up uh, in a empty directory, you're going to want to make uh, a new lean4 project. So hit Control shift p to bring up this window and lean for project create standalone project and lean will be making the uh, folder for us once it's complete we should get a prompt to say would you like to navigate to this directory we're going to hit yes open project folder yeah so in the lake tool chain this is the version our main file basic.lean has one definition and you'll see that when we open it up uh, we get this lean info view. And this is going to be um, very important for getting feedback uh, as you program in lean. So once that's done, we're just going to start jumping right into the uh, exercises. So if you navigate away from here, we'll go to theorem proving in lean. And you should definitely read chapter ones and two. And we're just going to start with propositions and proofs. Uh, basically, um, what you need to know in Lean is that uh, propositions uh, correspond to types. Um, this is because of the Curry-Howard isomorphism. It says that you can uh, talk about, um, you can reason about uh, things like logic uh, in terms of uh, logic and sets in terms of types. And so that's very important for Lean because um, at the end of the day, Lean is a functional programming language. And so functions like this function right here, def hello, is a, uh, a, a mapping from types, right? So for example, this has type string. Um, string is not a set. Um, so we have to have some kind of formal um, way of mapping theorems and axioms and propositions to this land of types. So basically what that means is that something like a proposition like P implies Q uh, will correspond to a type um, of a function from P to Q. Um, so here we can see the first example of this. Uh, and this is super important to understand. Well, we're just going to prove something very trivial. So here we have our function, uh, I mean our theorem, T1. And this theorem, I'll just walk through all the syntax real quick. The name is T1. We have a type. The colon is always type of. So T1 has type of p to q to p. And the colon equals, or the walrus operator, means that this is our value of this type. So here's the type, and here's the value. Of course, that means that this value must have this type. And it does. So this is a lambda syntax in lean um, for a lambda function that takes uh, an hp and the H stands for hypothesis of type P 
And here's where we see the first proposition as a type. This proposition, P is a type prop, is a type. Uh, and a value of that type is a proof of that type. Um, so a, a hypothesis in this case, because it's assumed, but it is a proof. So we know P by HP. And we're going to return another Lambda. Um, and th this is the way that they wrote it. I think a little bit simpler would just be to have one Lambda with two arguments. Um, although, you know, taking advantage of currying and stuff, that's, that's again, that's um, for functional programmers, not so much for mathematicians. Um, so this is just the same thing, but with one Lambda definition. And we have a proof here of type Q. And the orange squiggly is saying that we are just not using it. And that makes sense because we aren't um, returning it. We're just returning our hypothesis P. And of course, we have to return HP here, not P, because if we try to return P, that's just trying to return a type. And we'll get an error saying type mismatch. P has type prop, but is expected to have type P of type prop. In other words, fancy language for give me a value, not a type. So we have a value of type P, and that is our HP. So if we want to get rid of this orange squiggly, uh, just this is syntax, uh, you can put an underscore in front of it to say, hey, I'm not actually using HQ, or we can just say underscore uh, by itself. And both of these work. Um, we don't even need to be explicit about the type. We can just say underscore instead of the whole type, and that also works. Um, and this is basically just the constant function. Okay, so we have our T1, and we can just check that real quick by typing hashtag check T1 to get the value. Uh, I like to have all messages off over here on the right, so that just to see what I'm looking at and not everything else. And we can see that uh, T1 is of this type. Great. Uh, moving on. Um, we have propositional logic and just some quick definitions and how to type them. Uh, in lean, you'll need to type um, quite a few things such as, you know, um, let's just evaluate something real quick to demonstrate, p backslash or q. Um, sorry, these are types. Of course, we have to check those, evaluate them. And p or q, uh, you can type that with the backslash and Usually the way to type something is pretty self-explanatory, backslash or backslash if, um, for if and only if, um, and yeah. Um, conjunction um, and on intro is a constructor that builds an and from two hypotheses. So, in our theorem T1, we could instead, let's just copy and paste this, make T2, and we're going to say P implies Q implies P and Q. And we can do that by, instead of function, we can say intro P, HP, HQ. And the problem here is that we still need to take our Q and P. So we're going to say function P, Q goes to uh, this just equals greater than and dot intro. Oops, I forgot my H's. And dot intro HP and HQ. Great. What's next? Um, and dot left H creates a proof of P from a proof uh, H, P, and Q. So we can say uh, if we've proven um, T2, we can check. Uh, T2 uh, dot left. No, that doesn't work. Um, let's just apply T2 to B and Q. It also doesn't work. We need to have a value of that type to do this. Um, so it's easiest to just do this over here. Uh, let's say theorem T3. E I am, oops, B, Q, I am, P, and Q. 
Actually, we're going to prove P and Q implies P, kind of the reverse of theorem of T1, but for and. And we're going to do that by assuming the hypothesis function P and Q, HP and HQ, actually. And we're going to return the left value. Okay, great. So that is an example of and.left. Oh, they had this example themselves too. Great. And then they have P and Q implies P and Q. Although, of course, oh, this is the opposite uh, commutative property. P and Q implies Q and P. And dot intro, and then you take the right of H, take the left of H. And here H is just the P and Q hypothesis. Anonymous constructor notation, of course, they being programmers have to make it um, have to make two different ways of doing everything. Um, but this is nicer syntax uh, for constructing art things where lean knows what the type should be. Um, you can use this sort of syntax. So lean knows that you have to make a P and Q here. So instead of saying and on intro, we can get away with backslash less than HB comma backslash greater than because lean knows Right over here that the goal is of type p and q by the way the turnstile means goal these are your hypothesis or what you know you have to show the goal from these okay um great 